can see that you're doing it. Take me there, Hoss. We're going crazy. Good morning, good morning, good morning, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, young and old, big and small, and welcome to Attorney Commander J.R. Report by Chesson Talk Show. Today is the 17th of September. It's another day. As we get closer to the end of this year, we get closer to elections in America and in Liberia. Let's get into my show today. <clears throat> First of all, I want to take some time and thank the Almighty God of Israel too, my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, for giving me this day to talk to you. I pray for my message this morning to touch your hearts, to touch your minds, to awaken your spirit to the new era of Liberianism, of Americanism. The state of our country in America is a terrible state right now. As Americans, Black, white, brown, yellow. We all have constitutional obligations and duties to this great nation. No matter where you came from to arrive on the shores of this great nation, entitled to life, you are entitled to liberty, you are entitled your pursuit, your happiness. And nobody should be able to take it for you. As long as you are a law-abiding citizen, as long as you pay your dues to the United States of America, nobody has the right to take your constitutional and free rights. America is the land of the free and the home of the brave. And once you come here and pay your dues and work hard to earn a living and strive to live the American dream and the American way of life, you deserve a chance in this country. This country was made and built upon the shoulders men and women who struggle for survival, honestly standing up for their rights 
and constitutional duties and responsibilities, the patriotic duties to our country, dying and giving their lives. It, went, it wasn't only white men, but black men, but brown men, and there were yellow men. <clears throat> we all gave our input to this nation. And in this day and age, we don't need a crazy, insane president, Donald John Trump. Donald Trump is insane. And all the people following him have lost their minds and they will meet with the consequences of their own actions. They know we're in a te terrible state in our nation. We've got fires raging, people losing their lives and their homes on the west coast of America. we got people on the Gulf Coast, down south, losing their homes and their lives to the hurricane and the winds and rain. Our people are still dying of COVID-19, which is the plague, the plague of the president totally lost his mind on this issue. Our president is so egotistic and worried about his self and his era of existence in this age that he has lost his mind after killing nearly 200,000 Americans because of his lies and his betrayal of the truth and the American people. He's still on this path with hope of being president of the I'm warning you Americans, Donald Trump, Will be punished by God and man. And if he persists as the president of the United States, the elements of nature will be worse on this country than we ever imagined. Y'all think the fire burning, the hurricanes going on right now, anything? Let this man become president or punish our nation. Because this man has the dean this dean the truth. This man has the dean our beliefs in the divine. He wants to play, replace the divine. He wants to turn us into a dictatorship in support of Russia. And that ain't happening. It ain't happening. Keepers of America. We are the people that ensure the survival of the world, the peace and harmony in the world today and as we did yesterday. Donald Trump has tried to sway us from the mission that our forefathers planted for us wants to lead us into an era of field dictatorship, field livelihood, based on lies and deceit and treachery and dishonesty. We can't do that. We can't do that. Our military men and women cannot do that. Our commander in chief who lies to us consistently gotta be changed. He gotta go. Now this man is so Britain after nearly 200,000 Americans dead. He stands up on the podium yesterday and disdains the head of the CDC, Robert Redford, Redfield. The man testifying before Congress on the truth of his knowledge of this disease that is killing us and what the CDC, C, CDC is doing and knows that can help our country and our people. <clears throat> and he telling them us that no vaccine will be ready until November or December 
on, on next year, 2021. Because even if they make vaccine now, only a few people can be tested with it. And even if it's good, only a certain percentage of the population can get it right away. The essential workers, the elders, the more vulnerable people to this disease got to get it first before they start looking at the rest of us in the world. Now Donald Trump comes out and tells us the man didn't know what he was talking. Telling us that the man lied to Congress. Because when you tell us the man didn't know what he was talking, how you tell us that the head of a whole division or department doesn't know what he's talking when he uh, uh, testified into Congress. If he doesn't know what he's talking, then he's lying. And this is what we have lived on a, this Donald Trump man for four years. It is intolerable. It is unsafe. It is against our national security. We can't live on a president like this. The man is a liar. He's a cheat. He's a low-down criminal and needs to go to jail. Donald Trump is a murderer. You know, and he keeps playing with our law and, and our system and our survival for his own gratification, for his own aggrandizement. This is insanity. Donald Trump has psychological mental problems. And just based on that fact, he's not fit to lead us. And I will rush vaccine to come out before election or on election day. And what good would that do with us? Even if the vaccine come out, it's not tested. People will rush and vote for you because of that. That's insanity. Let all the Trumpers go and take that vaccine. Test them. But sensible people will not take that thing. A vaccine is rushed. And that would be another cause of the masses death. Donald Trump, you already massacred 200,000 Americans. Peter, Trio, and you're unpatriotic. Right now you need to be interrogated, charged, sentenced. That's for the American people to decide that. That's for Joe Biden and Pamela Harris to fight that battle with you. <clears throat> My American people, this is total insanity. This is total insanity. The president has no medical knowledge. He has no medical training, nothing. And this man cannot continue to dominate our medical institutions and professionals and telling us they are liars and he knows better and he doesn't know anything. And he wants us to vote for him so he rushing this vaccine. Come on, my people, y'all take that vaccine, y'all will die. Let the Trump followers take that vaccine on election day, go vote for him and they can die later on. They'll take that vaccine against the advice of our medical professionals on your own. Mr. Redfield, Mr. Redfield has followed to, also told us that mask, wearing mask, is the most efficient thing we have right now, even when vaccines come out. Because until the efficacy of the or the effects of the vaccine is realized. We will still have to wear masks. That's our biggest source of defense against this disease, wearing masks. President of the United States of America. He has lost his mind. He has killed 200,000 Americans because of lies and betrayal. Who will continue to listen to the president? Who wants to be president?
Let the people who have, he has already condemned to death by backing them together in arenas throughout this country, by having them not ma wearing masks, they already condemned. Let him test them. Time, sensible, constitutional, democratic Americans. It's now and forever. Donald Trump, criminal. Power list the very laws his administration makes. He put the lives of Americans in continual danger. Since the beginning of this year, this man has caused 200,000 Americans to die. Aluta! Continua. I think we're talking about Trump. On our Liberian nation, my people, do our leaders love Liberia? Do our leaders care about Liberia? All the people who got leading us have betrayed us, even Darius Dillon now. You know? They have betrayed us. Uh, the wealth and resources of our country. They have robbed it. They have mismanaged it. They have abused it. And who suffers? Masses of Liberian people. Who suffers? A young children today who run in the street yelling Munya Munya and they don't know their lives. Their destiny is continually before them. How can these people betray our country and our children time and time again? How can these people take over our country and see our children running around the street now in school, yelling Muna Muna? They don't have good facilities for school. They don't have the good educational and teaching and fundamentals. They don't have the things that are necessary to promote wholesome education in our country. And even today, many of our children cannot go to the formal schooling because they've been so imbued in this fighting and violence and, 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 and with all these things that are not conducive to wholesome functioning living. So many of them got to find their ways now to make a living. We have no rehabilitation centers in our country. All these things got to be built because our children still going through trauma. The, the children of the children are still going through trauma because their fathers and their mothers are incapable of taking care of them, of being capable of providing necessities they need to rise from the mat to the mat. And Liberian people, look at how all of you are suffering during the rainy season. When the rain comes, it comes all in your room. The children play all in the swampy water, the same thing that, that all the feces floating in from people and uh, defecating all throughout the city. You can't go on living like this of my people and my country. And God has blessed me to advance to this level where I'm capable of teaching and my people. Standing up for their rights and constitutional duties and responsibilities of themselves and our leaders. We all have responsibilities and duties. And I want to enlighten my children that part of your constitutional duty is to stand up for your rights and constitutional benefits that these people are constantly stealing for us. If you people do not stand up and demand what is yours and demand that the government stand up to it and stop making excuses, stop relying on the fact that we ain't got money, we poor. If we poor, 
Why are you people riding all the expensive cars? Why are you people carrying home $15,000 a month? Why are you people enriching yourselves with light and, and eat and water and all these things at the expense of the black people? Can't continue on this path, my people. All the people leading us have failed us. Look at the CPP. They still can't organize among themselves. They're still fighting among themselves. Look at the, thing, the violence they had in Lima County recently. You know? Now that's another thing. The chairman, Alexander Cummings, got to sit down and decide. Well, how you bring all these parties together when everybody vying for the same leadership and refusing to cooperate with each other? Walker won't be president. Euro won't be president. And... and, and Tyler won't be speaker at the house, and, and all the criminals won't be. And how can Eric Cummings say he's a leader of all these people who are disdained and hence have been dirty with the destruction of the Republic of Liberia? I think we need to consider Yeke Kolobar's new party, see what he's putting together, because all the people who can't trust them. Trust them. And Yaka Kaluba said tired with them. And what he telling us, he now with them. He now with, with, with Jones. We are here forming your own party. Because that's what I would do in my country. I ain't going behind these people. All these people have ripped our country off. You know? Old man Boka too old, he need to sit down now and leave the politics business for the people who can carry our country forward. We need a new breed of leaders in our country. We need a new breed of people who will bring fresh breath politics, fresh breath of life, fresh breath of education in our country. You know? Now I listened to, to I listened to Bridge Radio this morning and, and, and Gali the Giant. And um it's, it's disheartening to hear what happened with Daryl Dillon. To hear how right now, he, she said he would only take $5,000 of the $15 paid, $15,000 $15, paid the legislators are getting. Now he has changed that. They say he's getting $6,000 something now. You know, he, he, he said he could live on 5000 Now he can't live on 5000 Now he, he, he living on 6000 plus. So that's a, he changed his word right there. He told the Liberian people he would not ride no car more than $40,000. Now, a year, Gali said he got a sick to $5,000 car. All the promises he made to the Liberian people, he going back on them. He threatened George Weir was stoning his house and doing that he coming back and saying he taking word back and things like that. You know, we don't know what's going on in our country. I think all our leaders are insane. And we need honest, truthful leaders in our country because this is what killing our country. It's not the politics. It is just honest men and women in our country since Ellen Johnson. Ellen Johnson said if they don't breed men and women for Liberia, she weakened our country because she didn't enforce the laws. She didn't punish the criminals. Instead of punishing them, she put her children over them, who are even just as more corrupt than the people they're leading. That demonstrates that Ellen Johnson is just as corrupt as her children. Ellen Johnson said it. And we need to punish these people. These people got to pay for the excesses of our resources, for the excesses of the behaviors that are immoral and wicked against the Liberian people and the Liberian nation. We can't continue on this thing, you know. So where does CVSPP stand? Can they even survive in this next election? You know, because our people got to stand for something. A feel for everything. And CPP 
is not a good representation. It's not a good representation of leadership for the Liberian people. All those people in our group are guilty of crimes against the Liberian people. And if Elliot John and Cummings link himself and his party with them, he's just as guilty. I listened to George Lobo this morning too, you know, and I understand his point, but you can't be with a party that is diluted with people who have participated in destroying Liberia and bringing us down to where we are today. These people participated in it and they gotta be punished. They gotta face the court of law for their crime. And Liberian people, we cannot wait for war crime court. That's not our destiny. That's Ellen Johnson people foolishness with the international community. We have to grow up as men and women and take the destiny of our country and our people back into our own hands. If we got to resurrect our country and take it back from the United Nations as a sovereign, free nation on the African continent, we have to stand up and demonstrate to the world that we can take our corrupt and evil leaders ourselves and punish them put them in court and execute the laws of the Republic of Liberia as they're supposed to be executed. For too long, our country has been wicked by Ellen Johnson Sirleaf. For too long, Ellen Johnson has let, Ellen Johnson Sirleaf has let the Liberian people depend on the international community for everything. We need the international community. There's no doubt about it. They are our friends and partners in our redevelopment process. But that does not mean we solely and solely encourage our people to depend on our enemies. Does not, does not mean that. Liberian people cannot be relying and depending on other people forever. If we can't do this thing ourselves, then we are not men and women and no leaders of a free, democratic African nation. The first Negro Republic on the It's very deep. We are missing something. We are missing the essence of who we are. We are missing the essence that Ellen Johnson Sirleaf and her family stole from us to steal and rob from the Republic of Liberia. And that is why this woman has to and must be punished. This woman must face the laws and rule of law and justice in Liberia. The, things, the same thing she has avoided since the TRC report, she gotta face it. We gotta have strong men and women who are Liberians to execute the laws, rule of law of Liberia, firmly, without fear, without rep and him, fear, without patience, without any delay, because if justice is delayed, justice. Gotta get back. You see, I'm getting back into my legal physiologies and all these axioms that have been dormant in me for so long because I've been dealing with security and military. Now I'm coming back into my area constitutional democracy and constitutional law to discipline these people. Let these lawyers stand up to me. I'm ready for you. We have a justice department of competent lawyers of Liberian descent. Sit down. Plan the prosecution of these evil people and Johnson and our family. We have strong auditors 
I will honor these people and ensure that they pay and return every cent they have stolen from the Nigerian people. No stone will be unturned. We have too much money out there that we need to build our country and we got to go after it. If we can't get the money, we're taking your properties in Liberia and selling it. There will be no joke about it. Y'all who coming home for your properties in Monrovia and things like that, y'all better be mindful that I myself will lose property. I don't care. But we're getting justice in our country. And if the, the, the people from up country want Monrovia, let them take it. Me and my people moving up country because we got to build our country. Everybody want to come to the coast, let them come to the coast. We can move anywhere else. We can travel all over the country. We fix Liberia. It will be better than ever before. And we can't continue on the thing. You know? You know, and Joe Lobo say he didn't like to be in politics. You in politics, then you say, well, I don't like to be in politics. So where you are now? Are you in politics or you're not in politics? You can't be involved with the party and speaking as you are as a head of a party. Then you say you're not in politics. That's double talking. So you either in it with it, or you're not in it at all. Then you're deceiving the Liberian people too. And we have to stand on truth. You can't tell, you got, we got to watch the double talk. You can't say you with a party and party leader that you say you don't like to put your hands in politics. Then what are you speaking for? So all these things we have to be cognizant of them. We got to challenge our leaders. We got to make sure that these people live up to what they say they would do. Not on their words. No, I don't rely on no politician word. I rely on his constitutional duties and obligations and performance as a president, a leader of my country. You can come and tell me anything, but what do you do to change these things, to change our country? Our country have priorities, and we have to put these priorities before us when we're leading our country. We know that Liberia is dirty and nasty and funky. Any president that comes to Liberia and does not clean up Monrovia, does not straighten up that city, our people's lives are in danger. We got nearly half of the population living in, in Monrovia and its surroundings. We got to be cognizant of that. We got to be cognizant of the cognizant of the health of our people in Monrovia. Everybody up country when they when they when they when they sick and they can't control it and they can't heal it, they send them to Monrovia. And we have no fertilities in Monrovia. TFK cannot accommodate the people of Monrovia alone. Then we got to bring the people from up country into our country. We have failed our country for so long. We have failed our youth for so long. To Liberian leaders, love Liberia. Our Liberian leaders, cognizant of what it means to be patriotic men and women. Are they in our government to enrich themselves and their families only? As it has been from time immemorial, everybody coming to government with the intention to steal and enrich their families. This is not what our government is for. This is not what the Democratic Republic of Liberia is for. It's time that our people, our youth, come to our senses and tell these corrupt and evil people that continue to rip us off, rip our children, that continue to do dysfunctional and evil things in our society. Time of the Liberian people is now. It is time to cease and desist all of this dysfunctional way of living. I'm here to tell your Liberian people. I'm here to tell you all my young children. I'm here to tell you all my people that there is indeed a better way for all of us. There is indeed a better hope 
false. Not this deceitful, lying, treacherous thing they call hope for Liberia. Country is being patient every day when our system is being disdained, when our leaders have no consciousness of who they are and they want to stay in power. My young children, the time of the Liberian people is here. You all got to realize that you people hold the key to the destiny of your future, to your own destiny, to your own sense of Liberianism. Rise. Rise. Listen to Commander and Tony G. Ira Kapok by Chesson. The time of the Liberian people is now. And we're in the sunshine phase. And we gotta get out. And all my people, this is our time. This is all right. Uh -huh. I'm going through a sunshine phase. I play my brother's song because my brother was a revolutionary too, in his own way. If you listen to Alhaji's songs, you know that he was a man of the struggle, in his own way. You're gonna take a sunshine time. Aluta! Continue. Have a good day, my brothers and sisters. Let's look to the future and hope that our children will rise, will rise through our education and our enlightenment of the future. The need of us to rise today to change our country for tomorrow. Goodbye. Have a good day.